Indeed, ladies and gents, and welcome back to Cold Waters with Mags, and once again we're hunting down another solo bloody alpha. So, I might as well take the opportunity at this point to do a bit of a post-recording rather than a live one to answer a couple of questions that have been popping up over the last few Cold Waters videos. One of the most prominent ones is, why don't the submarines on my end appear to fight back all that much? Well, it's actually got nothing to do with the difficulty level. I have the difficulty level set to elite permanently because anything less than that doesn't really offer a challenge anymore. It comes down to how I'm performing the attacks. Now, those of you who are experienced in cold waters will already be aware of everything that I'm about to say, so this is mainly for the new people. First things first, there is a lot of setup that actually goes into my attacks. From the point that I actually start showing the video and start the recording, on my general cold waters videos i may have already been stalking a submarine for anywhere up to 15 to 20 minutes getting myself into position or somewhere near where i think position would be good just so that the video itself is sort of auto edited and not too long this means as a general rule i'm pretty close to a good position to start my attack or very close to an optimal position to start my attack at around the point the video actually starts but you generally don't start there i have had submarine hunts one versus one in cold waters where it's an hour before you actually fire the torpedo i generally don't put those on the video or if i do they are heavily cut down because well it's an hour before i actually get around to firing the torpedo and that was well timed Anyways, a couple of things you'll need to notice from this screen. One, I'm not firing the torpedo directly at the target. Two, if you look at my contact information down on the bottom right hand corner, I'm negative 50, negative 50 on both active and passive sonar to Sierra 1, which is an Alpha class submarine. That means I'm in the baffles. Now, the baffles are a section of the submarine that is effectively blind. A submarine, no matter what type, cannot see directly behind itself, and there is a reason for this. Submarines, no matter how well made they are, are not silent. Inside of those metal tubes there is quite a lot of running machinery. The primary one, of course, is a working nuclear reactor, which while it has been custom built for the submarine and built to be as quiet as possible, is still pumping water around for cooling and is still doing a multitude of other things that are making noise. Attached to that nuclear reactor is a massive electric motor, or sometimes several electric motors, all of them driving a large shaft which will go through at least some form of gearbox generally a reduction gear, before making its way to a massive bloody propeller that's churning up the water behind the submarine allowing it to move. And that's not even talking about the oxygen recirculation systems as well as the actual crew itself moving around the inside of the submarine. Just these things alone are incredibly loud no matter how quietly they have been made to the point where if another submarine with sensitive enough sonar equipment was in the area it would be able to hear these things from several kilo yards away, even when the sea wolf is running as quiet as it possibly can. Now if a submarine has audio equipment sensitive enough to be able to hear another submarine's nuclear reactor or a propeller running at several kilo yards to tens of kilo yards range, then that equipment is most certainly going to be sensitive enough to hear the submarine's own nuclear reactor, its own engines and its own propeller, at least if they're unshielded. And this is where the baffles comes in. The baffles is actually a term used to describe a section of the submarine that has been shielded in order to prevent the submarine's own noise from corrupting the signal or potentially overwhelming or damaging the sensors that the submarine uses in order to be able to listen to the outside world, in order to be able to find contacts itself, in order to be able to engage in targets. To do this, the entire rear section of the sonar bell leading into the main section of the ship, so almost directly from the front of the submarine going back, has been shielded off. All of the sensors down the sides of the submarine are also completely shielded towards the center, so directly down from their mounting points towards the submarine, and towards the rear of the submarine, so that the sound of the propeller doesn't overwhelm any of the sensors. This stops the submarine's own sound from becoming an issue in its ability to actually detect other targets, but it does have one side effect. The submarine cannot directly see behind itself. Now, exactly how big the baffles are varies from submarine to submarine. 
Some submarines have a particularly wide baffle, it covers a very large area. Some are meant to be up to nearly 45 degrees. Other submarines have a very narrow. Exactly what sizes they are is obviously a fairly close kept secret, especially with newer submarines, but it is impossible to run a submarine in the configuration that we have today without having that blind spot to the rear. No matter how they are built, they must have that blind spot, otherwise they can't see it all. And it's this blind spot that I'm exploiting in every single one of my videos that you've seen where the submarine hasn't reacted. What I'm doing is circling around very carefully to keep myself undetected and getting into a position where I can slip my entire submarine, regardless of what I'm driving, into the baffles of the submarine that I am hunting. Once I'm in there, I can afford to fire a torpedo safely without the launch transient being detected. Now the launch transient is the second loudest thing that a torpedo will experience in its lifetime, with the loudest of course being its own detonation. The launch is noisy and can be detected, so if you can get your submarine into the baffles before you fire, there is no chance that the enemy submarine can actually hear you fire the torpedo. Once the torpedo is running, you then want to put it dead center of the rear of the baffles. The baffles are shaped like a cone coming off the rear of the submarine. That is to say, the further away from the submarine you are, the wider the area is that the submarine can't see in, but the closer you get to the submarine, the narrower it gets. So putting the torpedo smack bang in the center and preferably at the same depth of the target means the torpedo can get very, very, very close before it would be actually detected. In fact, in real life, it wouldn't be detected at all. If you could keep a torpedo swimming straight up the center of the baffles of a real life submarine, the first that they would know of it is when the torpedo strikes the prop. In cold waters, however, things are a little bit different. You can fire a perfect shot and the torpedo will always be detected at one kill yard. So that gets a torpedo to within one kill yard of my target using tactics in order to be able to get it there. So. Once you get the torpedo to that point, why isn't the submarine reacting? Why does it simply accelerate and perhaps drop a countermeasure and then die? Well, that's actually really easy to explain. The AI in cold waters makes its decisions on how it's going to deal with a potential attack based on what has the highest chance to actually succeed. It's a fun little calculation that it does because there is only so many things that you can actually do when a submarine is engaging you and you have a torpedo that is already closing on your location. The problem is there is not a hell of a lot of options when you're in a submarine that is at a slow speed that has been trying to hide that hasn't been detected or at least believed that it hadn't been detected and suddenly have a torpedo appear just a kill yard or only a few seconds away from the detonation point. A submarine is most maneuverable when it's fast. It has to be moving quickly. The slower a submarine moves, the slower the water flows over the control surfaces, the slower the submarine is to turn. If the submarine can't turn quickly, then the submarine cannot generate a knuckle, so that is completely out of the picture as well. And as you can see, Sierra 2 has just started accelerating. And you can see how slowly it accelerates, considering there is a torpedo right there at this point. Even going to flank speeds and cavitating its heart out, this hand-class submarine is not going to hit anything more than about 15 knots before my torpedo hits it, which is about the bare minimum speed you need to start basic maneuvers. You really want to be pushing 20 knots if you're going to be playing with torpedoes at fairly close ranges. And the AI is fully aware of this. The reason why it's not maneuvering is because if it maneuvers, it's going to lose speed and it needs that speed to dodge the torpedo. Sometimes they'll drop countermeasures, sometimes they won't, but it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Essentially, the reason why it appears that the submarine is not reacting is because it doesn't have enough of anything that it needs to actually react and it is trying to build up enough speed in order to be able to begin maneuvers but you haven't given it enough time to do so by putting the torpedo in that close. Essentially, this is the problem with cold waters and making content on it. If you see me dodging torpedoes and trying to evade enemy submarines or enemy surface shipping because I'm under attack and I've got depth charges coming in, it means I've fucked up or I've done a coastal launch mission, but that's a whole other thing. If I fire a torpedo and the target seems to just die with no real fuss, it means I've done the attack right, I haven't been detected, which is the entire point of a submarine in the first place. Essentially, the less the enemy reacts to my attack, the better I've performed it. The stronger a response I get, 
the more badly I've managed to screw it up. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching. We'll be taking on the Missile Fleet in the next Cold Waters video. Until next time, remember to click that like button, share it, and subscribe if you would like to see more. And as always, take care.